Hello brothers and sisters, uh, blessings to you all here um, on this day and as we are getting into day 12 of our 21 days prayer and fasting, I hope your heart is being encouraged, I hope you're finding joy in, in seeking Jesus and, and just waiting on Him through His Word, through times of prayer um, and just through times of cutting off all these other things that are temporary. And so this morning here, I just come to share a devotional with you from Colossians as we've been going through the book of Colossians here throughout our times of prayer and fasting. And today, day 12, we are in Colossians chapter 3, just the beginning of it, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. And, um, and, and with chapter 3, Paul just begins to really dive into and, and, and break apart what is this new life that we have in Christ Jesus, that those who trust and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior what is this new life about? What does it actually look like? And so let's go hit that here. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 4 and I'll share a few thoughts and then I'll pray for us. And so Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 said, If you've been raised with Christ, seek the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Oh man, so much there. Just beginning off with, in Jesus, right, we have died to ourselves. We have died to our sins. We are no longer under the power and tyranny and reign of sin in our lives. But rather, we have a new life in Christ. That is the life of Christ itself. And so, uh, Paul begins here, chapter 3, with asking the question or, or making a statement like, Hey, have you been raised with Christ? If you've been raised with Christ, have you died to your sin and do you have a new life in Jesus? If so, if that's the case, then here's what happens. There's going to be a shift in the things that you pursue, the things you seek. I love the, the idea of seek. Um, and just, you know, as Scott used the illustration when we did the sermon series on Colossians of hide and seek, right? Trying to go find that which was lost and pursuing those things that are hidden from us. Because in this life, Right In this life that we live, there can be those things that are rooted in the kingdom of God and are of eternal worth, and there are very much those things that are not. So what is it that we're seeking? Right, We can either seek the things with no eternal value, or we can seek the very things of eternal value where Christ is seated right in heavenly places. And so one is that seeking, is that pursuing of the eternal things. And then secondly, he shifts that and he's like, well, our minds got to change too. We have to have a change in perspective right? Setting our minds on things above. We have to have an eternal perspective with the way in which we think about things, um, pursue things, uh, seek things, and even plan out to do things, right? Because it's easy for us. And, and what this should do to us is have us ask the question of, man, whose kingdom are we building? Are we building a kingdom for ourselves here and now on this earth? The things that we're doing, the things that we're pursuing, the jobs that we're doing, is it about a building a kingdom for us in this temporary time? Or is it about building a kingdom for God, a kingdom that lasts in eternity? And so set your mind. We have to have our mind shift in what is of eternal worth. Because there are those things, and we have those choices each and every day. Whether it's in our relationships or the things that we do, whether those things are of eternal worth. What are we investing in? Investing our energy, investing our time, investing our thoughts, investing our money, right? We're either investing it in one way or the other. The kingdom of this earth and our own kingdoms being built up or the kingdom of God and that of eternal worth. And so seek the kingdom of God. Seek those things which are above. Set your mind on those things which are above. Not on earthly things. Not on the things that are temporary. Not on the things that will disappear. Okay. And then he goes on, verse 3, to say, For you died. For you died. How many know your old self is dead? I think some of us just really need to hear that and meditate on that. Like, you don't have to live in the same way of your old self if you've received Christ. You have died. That person is dead. Paul says in Corinthians, Behold, the old is gone. New things. For you died. You died. You no longer have to live according to the old self, but according to the new life that is Christ. For your life is hidden in Christ. And here I love the, the idea of this is even we have security in Christ. 
our life is in is in him okay so listen in this life you're gonna lose things right you may lose a job you may lose wealth you may lose health you may lose whatever it is and ultimately you may even lose your physical life but these are not the things that we have security in our security is in Christ himself our life is hid in him he is our very life okay if we receive him and trust in him as Lord and Savior he is our very life and so though we lose all those other things though we lose people in our lives though we lose our very own life our lives is secure in him if we've trusted in him as Lord and Savior in Jesus alone is security of life and not just this temporary life but eternal life okay because when we do die when our lives end here and, and it really, which is a very, a very small smidge of time compared to eternity, our lives really begin. I love what my father-in-law used to say when he was living, like, man, the, the day that I die will be the best day of my life, as his life was ended by cancer, looking forward to just eternity in Christ. Living for that now, but looking forward to that, which lasts forever. And then... Paul ends it by saying, just again, giving us assurance of what do we have to look forward to, right? With verse four, when he says, when Christ appears, right? When Christ appears in all his glory, then we also will be with him. When Christ, who is your life, then you also will appear with him in glory. Look at that inheritance. Friends, I really want us to think about that. Think about that. Just the glory of God. His glory that he shares with no other. He's, he, we get to share with it, with him in it. That's our inheritance. We have an inheritance in him and his glory. When he returns, we look forward to that. And that glory that we get to share with Christ, that inheritance that we have in Christ, that cannot be compared with all the glory of the kingdoms of this earth with all the wealth of the kingdoms of this earth, it just can be compared. And even as I'm speaking about it, I don't do it justice in just using words. Like we don't know what that is gonna be, but we know it's gonna be so far greater. It's the glory of Christ alone and that we have the privilege of sharing in that with him when he appears and returns. And he is returning as we've been talking about here in our end time series. If one thing is sure, Christ is returning. If one thing is sure, you have an inheritance in him if you've trusted and believe in him would you join me in prayer uh, lord i thank you that we have died to self i thank you that you died for us and that we can die to, to ourselves because you have died for us you have died in our place as our substitute god i thank you for newness of life it's not just a change of behavior a change of um whatever it is, a lifestyle, God, but it's truly a new life, so completely different. It's your very life in us. I thank you for this theme throughout Paul's writing in Colossians and in other writings. It's Christ in you, the very life of Christ. Christ, who's your life? Your life is hidden in him. God, would we just allow ourselves to meditate on that? I have died to self. I have new life in Christ Jesus. I have new life in Christ Jesus. I just want to speak that over my brothers and sisters right now. Those who may be weariness, who feel like the life has been sucked out of them of, of with, with, with COVID, with all the things that have been happening in our lives, God, just family life and with young kiddos for some of the moms, school, whatever it is, there's been so many things in these days, God, that feel like are sucking the life out of us. But man, God, I thank you that the life in Christ is secured and nothing can take that away. Not even death can take that away. That's the very thing that you did. You defeated death so that though we die, this physical life, Jesus, we have security of life in you. I pray just your blessing over my brothers and sisters as they continue to pursue you, God. May you create in us a new mind, continue to shift our mind to be like yours, that we would have Christ-like mind in the things that we seek, in the things that we do, in the things that we build. May we be building your kingdom and not our own. Give my brothers and sisters the grace, the strength, the encouragement, and the hope to live according to the life of Christ in them, not their own life, not the old life. For that is gone. Behold, the new has come. 
pray blessing upon blessing on your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, guys. Keep going. He is so good. He's so worth it. He's here now, and he is coming.